Hey, welcome back, Knife Nerds and Everyday Care People. It's your boy, the Big Kid. I can still feel like Superman here. And uh, I have got myself a little bit of a first impressions knife. Uh, and I don't know if I'm going to be carrying this one. This one here is a little bit of a, uh, a, little bit of a unicorn here. So uh, we're going to have the tabletop and check it out. But before we do, please, please don't forget to old smash the old like button as well as subscribe. And if you want to uh, be apprised of all the stuff that I put up, please uh, don't forget to hit the old notification button. That's one that looks like a little bit of a bell down in the corner. But most of all, please, please subscribe. All right, let's head down to this, the tabletop and we'll have the first impressions of this. Sneak preview. All right. This here is Spyderco's brand spanking new stovepipe. Oh, wow. I mean, this thing here was really really anticipated uh by me uh i got a my friends uh, out there at alberta firearms here steven uh, matt and dan uh the fine folks at alberta firearms they've uh, introduced spyderco here to southern alberta and i get to you know some of the little advanced notice stuff they send me when they get little emails and stuff like that this is coming out this is coming out because they know how much of a fanboy, a Spyderco fanboy I am. And this is one that just, just came out and I was like, I had to put it inside my pocket and check it out. And I gotta say, this thing here is a killer. Uh, I mean, it is the old Spyderco stovepipe and it is very, very expensive, folks. Um, this is one that is, I think Spyderco took this as a design challenge to show you how well they can manufacture custom knives or semi-custom knives in their factories and they did a wonderful job with this so let's kind of go over this this was here was uh by a fellow by the name of uh david uh ridbaum or, or sorry or ride bomb uh, build the butcher designed stovepipe now it's got 20 cv steel on it it's got two big thick radius um titanium slabs on it it's a Reeves integral lock. Uh, it's got some wonderful, wonderful features to it too as well. They didn't just use the old Spyderco spoon clip or anything. They actually ended up taking a 3D milled uh, titanium clip there too as well. And it's got the old Spyderco logo right in it. And it is almost like a little bit of a hologram in there too as well. Whether they use that, a laser or what. And then of course you've got um, Mr. Ride Bomb's logo here on this side and you can see that i've just added a little bit of oil to this um and then you've got um the spyderco logo on this side and it's just really really neat now they've looks like they've acid washed 20 cv steel here and then kind of stone washed it there too as well so to go over the technical specs of this here the overall length is 6.75 inches so it's sub seven inches it's a little bit on the smaller side the closed length of four uh inches which is the exact same size as uh, the spyderco native five we just looked at now the blade thickness here is a really, really chunky four millimeters of the 20 CV steel. Uh, it is only comes one way, right hand carry tip up. I apologize for tip down left handed people. You're gonna have to stick with uh, this, the only way this knife comes. Now the blade length is 2.78 inches with 2.65 inch cutting. And of course it is a cleaver with just, I mean, Every little piece of this is got some sort of machining done to it and just gorgeous machining too as well. Now, of course, the steel is 20 uh, CPM 20 CV and it's 4.9 ounces, which is a little bit chunky for such a small knife. But it, it allows you to have weight that shows you, hey, I'm quality, but not weight that says, hey, I'm way too big for your pocket. I'll notice you all the time. It's just like it's heavy enough to know that you're like, oh, I've got a quality knife here but light enough to, that you can put it in your pocket and carry it all day long without worrying about it. And of course it is a high hollow grind here with um, a flat spot on top and it came whoa, whoa sharp. Uh, now this is, was made in Tai Chung and Tai Chung seems to be oh, one of the best fit and finish uh, factories that Spyderco owns. So you can see that it is absolutely dead center in here it's not left or right biased the machining is really really crisp along the entire thing to the point where some of the edges are just a smidge pointy like they're so there's the machined to such uh, great tolerances 
that they are um, a, a little bit pointy in the hands. You know, like it does kind of bug your palm a little bit uh, when, when you're carrying it. So you can see here, they've got a 3D machined pivot uh, collar here. Now, I don't know if that's just like, you know, the whole thing comes up or if there's a collar in there. Don't want to be taking it apart right now because this is quite an expensive knife. But you have it on both sides. And you can see that this side here is, uh, is the uh, the stop on it. So you're not going to over travel the uh, Reeves Integral Lock. And I don't see that there is um, a... There may be a steel insert there, or maybe not. I, I don't see one. I don't see any screws, uh, but there may be. If you look inside here, um, there may be some screws inside there that I don't kind of see. Do I have my, yeah, let's have a quick look at that. No, I don't see any screws. So it looks like it's it's titanium right on the, the seal, but there is no, there's no, there's no lock stick here whatsoever. I know, and you can look here, some people will think that maybe that's a little bit too much, but I mean, that is right at 50%. Uh, so there's no way that I think that this is going to be traveling over a long way. So I, I think I'm totally fine with, with a 50% lockup. And when you have a little knife like this that's so damn sharp, and your fingers, I mean, are, can be like, can be kind of cut in the way, I think 50-50 is totally fine. And like I said, it is a... Reeves integral flame lock and you can see it's got the big cutout here too as well so I mean this here is in the in the good old US of A the MSRP or sorry the the street price on it is 420 bucks and here in Canada you're looking anywhere between 570 to 600 dollars here it's really really quite an expensive knife and it is not something that I think everybody is going to love right off the bat but you're going to love it if you're a Spyderco guy. You're going to love it if you're a knife guy. And you're going to love it if you're a guy who appreciates how hard it is to do this kind of machining, especially on something that is um, mass produced. This is something here that is more closer akin to a custom knife than I think Spyderco has built at any other place. Uh, it's every single thing on here, it looks like me with the you know perhaps like I said, they even got two different types of screws there and you know so with the exception of perhaps maybe these two screws these three screws or every single thing is specific to this knife now i don't know if there is uh if this thing here is running on washers or uh, bearings uh does it say here anywhere um no, it just says so. I, but I'm not going to take this apart to find out. I, I'm sure that I could. Uh, I'm sure that Mr. Nick Shabazz will be getting one of these, and he'll be pulling it apart, and then we can find out if it's uh, if it's um, uh, uh, bearings or, or bra phosphor bronze washers. But I got to say, it is smooth as silk, and just you know that. Let's listen, listen. I know it's just got a great, great sound when it clicks in the detent on it is not too strong and the detent is just strong enough that when you actually close it it just clicks right in there there is a little bit of a kind of a almost like a rhinoceros thing here some people think it looks like a uh, uh, like a flat hidden screwdriver it's just part of the design and that's really what it looks like it looks like a little bit of a rhinoceros on there i, I can't say enough about the about the absolute tremendous amount of machining that this take to build and this is kind of my first press on uh, first impressions on this this is a fantastic uh, uh well-built uh classy knife that's i think uh, an absolute smash by uh spider Co. so there's my kind of first impressions on this uh, i'll be probably doing a little bit of review down the road so don't forget to uh smash the old like subscribe and please, please stay safe out there. We're not out of the woods. Please keep your stick on the ice. The shiny side up. This is the Big Canucker saying adios.